mental health carers are anybody, whether they're friends or family, that provide support for someone that suffers from a mental health problem in the community. They are the experts sometimes about that patient's care. They know that person the best and sometimes provide 24-hour care at home. So they are an incredibly important partner when we provide services to someone that suffers from mental health problems. Sometimes, unfortunately, they don't really recognize themselves as carers. The types of illness that mental health carers have to deal with is quite a wide range. It could be a single episode of anxiety or depression, or it can be a more chronic condition like schizophrenia or dementia. Derek and I have been married for 50 years. I guess you could say we were, we were meant to be together. We've known each other since we were three years old. He was my one and only boyfriend, and I always knew he was the one for me. <laughs> it just took a little time to convince him that I was the one for him. I think the first sign that there was something wrong with Derek was when he forgot our wedding anniversary, August the 15th. He never forgot August the 15th. Every year, without fail, on the morning of our anniversary, he would wake me up in bed with a cup of tea and a single red rose. <laughs> He was such a caring, loving person. Over the following months, Derek forgot more and more and became dreadfully confused. I remember one morning getting a call from the post office. Derek had gone there to collect our pensions. And when he got there, he completely forgotten why he was there and, and more worryingly, where he was. The doctor did some tests and told us that he had early stage dementia. It all happened so quickly, really. And we've been through some difficult times. In the last five years, Derek has turned from being a fit and well caring husband to a to a totally different person, really. Derek I married has gone and doesn't even recognize me. It's such a, a cruel disease. He can't do anything for himself. I have to do everything for him. Get him up into his chair, wash him, even feed him and take him to the toilet. <laughs> Poor chap can't even smile. I've had to look after Derek 24 hours a day on my own, and sometimes I, I just feel that I'm a prisoner in my own home. Oh, I still love him, of course, but the person I knew and married has gone. Derek never had an aggressive bone in his body, but since his illness, he's started to have violent mood swings and lash out. I think that... The thing that gets me down most is the frustration of his illness. I know it sounds selfish, really, but sometimes I ask myself, what did I do wrong and why has it happened to me? I still hope for a cure, but I know in my heart there isn't one and things only get worse. I've been trying to get to the hospital for weeks to see a doctor about my hip. I keep having to cancel appointments because Derek has been so unwell, couldn't be left. <sighs> Looking after Derek has been a roller coaster ride for me, really. And there have been desperate times when I felt like giving up completely. I think the big turning point for me came when I finally realised and admitted to myself that Derek's illness had reached such a stage that I couldn't manage on my own anymore and I needed help. I hadn't realised that help and support was available to carers like me. It was like having a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. So for the moment, at least, I'm in a position where I can, thankfully, continue to care for Derek. 
our trust is currently emphasizing the role of carers and the value that they provide to the service because we believe that in the past that service has really been under-recognized. Without carers, the NHS would not be able to function in its current form. Carers save the NHS more than its annual budget. Mental health carers can have a range of different problems uh, if they do not have adequate support in the community. I think it's really important that staff are aware of the signs that are showing that a carer is not coping. And these could be either mental health problems or physical health problems. Someone might appear more anxious or low or they might uh, make a complaint about something quite trivial. Uh, it could be the person's appearance. It's important if you know the carer uh, to see that they're not neglecting their own physical health care, for instance diabetes or high blood pressure, and that they're going to appointments. Uh, or if it's a mental health problem, to be aware that carers themselves can present with anxiety or depression. My sister Sophia has been ill for a long time now. She's got schizophrenia. And it all happened quite quickly. Too quickly. I think the first signs for me were when she started to become withdrawn. She didn't want to go out or do the things that we used to love to do together, like shopping or going to restaurants. She used to be such a happy person, singing and dancing all the time. She doesn't do that anymore. I guess at first we thought that Sophia was depressed or something. She stopped bothering about her appearance. And before becoming ill, Sophia always took great pride in how she looked. When we were getting ready to go out, I could never get in the bathroom or near a mirror. And I was always borrowing her nice clothes. As her illness became worse, it was decided that I should look after Sophia as our parents worked long hours at their business. My family all agreed that this would be best. Everyone thought that she was probably just tired and after some good rest, she'd soon feel better. For me, the shopping trips and visits to restaurants stopped. And I spent every day in the house with Sophia. My auntie looked at some health leaflets at the doctors and she thought they might help. But they were all written in English, so she put them back. <laughs> it didn't matter though. We're a really strong family and we wanted to look after Sophia ourselves. Especially me. After all, she's, she's my sister. Sophia started to hear voices in her head. People telling her things. Weird things that weren't real. I couldn't understand what was going on with her. One day she totally lost it and dismantled the television. It was in pieces all over the floor. Sophia said that the people inside it wanted to hurt her. And around this time, the offers of help from my family also stopped. And I was just left to look after her all on my own. I didn't mind, but I had no life. One day things got much worse. I was upstairs and I heard all these screams like she'd gone crazy or something. I rushed downstairs and Sophia was crouched in the corner of the room. She was terrified. She said that people had been trying to get in through the window and wanted to kill her. All the windows were closed and locked. Sophia was the only person in the room. It was a terrible day for me. I didn't know what to do and I felt so desperate and helpless. She's my younger sister, you know, I should be able to look after her. But nothing I said seemed to help. My family didn't want to call a doctor and said that we should be able to sort out Sophia's problems ourselves. But they hadn't seen her in that state. I knew we really needed help and persuaded them that this was best for her. The doctor said that Sophia had to go into hospital for a short stay. When the ambulance came, it was very difficult. Very, very difficult. She was screaming and kicking. It was a horrible day. I cried myself to sleep that night. I felt like, like I'd let Sophia down. Since then, things have got much better. Sophia is on medication, and the voices in her head have stopped. 
When I went to visit her, the hospital told me that I was a carer and that I could get things to help me. I didn't know what a carer was. I don't see myself as a carer, really. It's not like I'm doing anything special. The help and advice that I now get as a carer has been great. Once a week I have an afternoon off and I can do what I want. I come here to my favourite place in the park, where I can sit on a bench, watch the world go by, and meet with my carer support worker. I think the staff of this trust can help and support uh, carers in the community by first of all being aware of the important role that they play so that we can listen to them, that we can involve them in the care plans, that we can get more information from them in the, in the outpatient clinics, in the ward rounds, but also provide them information uh, with the patient's consent. I think then together we can provide better care for our patients in the community.